Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23. Today, this is our 10th study in the book of Jeremiah. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Woe be unto the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. God set things up so that his people would be cared for spiritually and socially. But the leaders in Israel did not follow God's guidelines. And so, instead of being cared for, God's people were hurting. And God says, woe unto you. You didn't do your job. And he says in verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Their job was to care for God's people. But they used their authority to take advantage of his people. Verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries to which I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase, and I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. God, whenever possible, mixes in good news of forgiveness for those who learn their lesson with the bad news of judgment. And that's what he's doing here. He's giving them something to look forward to on the other side of punishment. 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. And this righteous branch that God speaks of this righteous branch in David's line is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is talking about Jesus ruling his people in the church and unlike the former leaders of God's people, doing it in a righteous way. 7. Therefore, behold the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, who brought up and who led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries to which I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. And God is bringing his people into his kingdom from all over the world today, through Jesus Christ, just as he brought Israel back to their land after he scattered them in their captivity. Verse 9, Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am... I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine hath overcome, because of the Lord, and because of the words of his holiness. The false prophets who spoke comforting words to God's sinful people instead of telling them to repent were a real source of frustration for Jeremiah. Jeremiah could not figure out why they didn't fear the holiness of God as much as he did, and as much as as much as any godly person would. And he just couldn't figure them out. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Their course is evil. In other words, the people of Israel, God's chosen people were going full blast into wickedness and nothing could restrain them. They just were not interested in restraint. 11. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. That is really scraping 
rock bottom. Evil had even spread to God's house, or the, his holy temple, in other words. The people were turning God's holy temple into a house of idolatry. 12. Wherefore their way shall be unto them like slippery paths in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall into them. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their judgment, saith the Lord. God's people chose the way of sin, which means they also chose the way of frustration and failure. Their life was like a person who walks on a slippery path, always falling, always messing up. 13. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. The northern kingdom had a, had a bunch of fools for prophets before they went into captivity. And that's one reason they went into captivity, because their prophets were fools who did not speak the word of God. They filled the minds of God's people with all sorts of unbiblical garbage. And the people loved it. And then it says in verse 14, God says, I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem. That would be the southern kingdom of Judah. An horrible thing. They committed adultery and walked in lies. They strengthened also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me like Sodom and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. And so the prophets in Judah are even worse, says God, than those prophets were in the north. They were teaching bad as good down in the south. They made God's people feel right at home with their sin. 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. And he says in verse 6, well, let's stop right here. It's the preacher's fault, says God. And he says, I'm going to make them pay. It's their fault that my people are not repenting. I'm going to make them pay because they're not giving them the pure word of God. Maybe the people won't repent. Maybe not everybody would repent. But if you don't have preachers who preach the pure truth of God's word, then nobody's going to have a chance to repent because nobody's going to know that they're a sinner who needs to be, re be repenting. And it just frustrates God. And it'll frustrate a man of God when he sees that too. 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not our and not out, excuse me, of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto those who despise me, The Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. God says, do not, God says, do not believe the preachers who tell you that all is well and you have nothing to worry about even though you're living in sin. God says, those preachers who preach a positive, upbeat message all the time, they're not giving you my word. 18. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word who hath marked his word and heard it well you know the, the problem with preachers like this the ones that God is condemning you know what their problem is one of their problems they don't spend time with God you know if they let the word of God sink into their souls if they really believed God's word they would be afraid to preach the garbage that they preach, this lukewarm, mushy stuff. 19. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. God says, when my wrath hits, it will make your head spin. It's going to come so fast, and it's going to come so hard. 20. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. God says, someday you're going to know. 
God says, I'm not going to restrain my anger and I will not stop punishing until my people have learned their lesson. 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. God said, I never spent, I never sent those preachers. And I never gave them a message to preach, even though they presumed to speak for me. Thus saith the Lord, God said this, God told me that, and all that other trash. 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have returned, and then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. You see, if those preachers would have spent time with God instead of trying to figure out how to win friends and influence people, they could have preached truth and they could have saved people from punishment. 23. Am I a God at hand? saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. See, God is saying, I didn't miss I didn't miss seeing the teaching of these false teachers. It wasn't like I was out of town or something. I know what's going on down there. twenty four. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth? saith the Lord. You can't hide from me, says God. You can't hide under under the covers. You can't hide in darkness. I see you. 25. I have heard what the prophet said, who prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have a dreamed, I have dreamed. Oh, you know, and they sounded so spiritual. Just like people today. You got people today in evangelicalism and Pentecostalism. I had a dream. The Lord spoke to me last night in a dream. You know, oh, it sounds so pious. The Lord spoke to me in a dream. You know, that's what they were saying. And it was all just a bunch of baloney. That's what God is saying. It's a bunch of baloney. 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. God says, how long do I have to put up with these dreamers who say they speak for me? And again, lots of people today are saying, the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. And all they're doing is speaking things that their own imaginations have come up with. But it sounds so pious. As so many people follow, they're so impressed with that. It's always been that way. Don't believe anything that doesn't come out of this book. This is the word of the Lord. Not what somebody dreamed last night. All this angers God when he sees this sort of thing. And look at verse 27. He continues, who, who think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten me, or my name for Baal. You know, those preachers were always talking about their dreams to each other. Why well, had this revelation? I had this revelation. Instead of talking about God's word, they were talking about their own foolish illusions. And all it was was a waste of time. You can't lead people closer to God unless you give them the pure word of God and that's written down in this book. 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. God says, God says, tell the people all about your revelations, so-called you false prophets. Tell them all about your dreams from me. But then God says, you preachers who really know me, you preach my word. So he says in verse 28, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. And then he says, What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? The word of God is powerful when it is delivered in a clear way. And God will put his word up against the gibberish of so-called prophets with their dreams and their the Lord told me this nonsense any day. He'll put up his word against that kind of trash any day. Because those who have a heart for God will be drawn to the word of God and they will recognize the spiritual bankruptcy of any counterfeit, no matter how eloquent and no matter how pious it may sound. 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one of them his neighbor. 
the prophets parroted each other. And they all repeat, repeated excuse me, the same old unbiblical nonsense. 31. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues, and saith, he saith. He says in verse 31, I'm against them. I'm against them. God is saying, I'm sick of watching those prophets, so-called, make up their messages and then tell people that they're my words. And wouldn't that anger you? If somebody was constantly saying things that go against your very character and what you believe, but attributing those words to you, wouldn't that bother you? This is the kind of stuff that was happening. And it happens today in all sorts of Christian churches, so-called. 32. Behold, I'm against those who prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their instability. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Those pious-sounding preachers who say that they are speaking for God but are not may impress those who want their ears tickled with just a little touch of religious speak, really are not doing any anyone any good at all. 33. And when this people, or the prophet, or a priest shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. The false teachers were like a heavy burden on God's back, a burden that He's about to shed. 34. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people who shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. God says, Those false teachers who are running around saying, This is what the Lord says, this is what the Lord says, this is the burden of the Lord, and this is the word of the Lord, they're going to be punished. And that's not just for back then, that's for today too. If people think that they're going to get away with this, speak in the imaginations of their own heart instead of the word of God and saying, thus saith the Lord, the Lord. If they think that they're going to get away with that, they are wrong. They may have a huge church full of gullible people who are drawn to that kind of pious sounding nonsense, but God's not drawn to it. And they will pay. Verse 35. Thus shall ye say every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, as the Lord of hosts our God. God is saying, Quit inventing lies, in saying that it is my word. Now God has his spokesmen, those he has called and equipped, to deliver his word and he's telling all these phony teachers to stop their buzz sessions where everyone shares their ignorance and everybody claims to be speaking for God just quit that kind of nonsense and start listening to the true preachers and then maybe they would learn something 37 thus shalt thou say to the prophet what hath the Lord answered thee and what hath the Lord spoken but since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, that the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying, ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Again, God tells the self-proclaimed prophets to start listening to his true word, spoken by his faithful preachers, and stop thinking that they know it all, and for heaven's sake, will you quit saying God told me? Will you just shut that stuff up? 39. Therefore, Behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you in the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence, and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. And that is the end of the super pious big shot preachers and so-called prophets who presume to speak for God, but in reality are just putting a pious spin on their own thoughts and their own ideas they will end in disgrace. And we will pick it up in chapter 24 next time. Until then, so long everyone.